Here is a nice geometric puzzle for you. You are given this shape and you're asked to show that AB equals CD without trigonometry. So here's the line AB and here's the line CD. You need to show that they are equal in length. When I first saw this problem, I have to admit I gave up. Firstly, I solved it with trigonometry and then I gave up trying to solve it without it because I thought it'd just be too complex. I thought there'd be lines everywhere and lots and lots of different shapes involved. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll just look at the solution. I can't be bothered. Uh, but actually, the solution is quite neat and simple and I wish I had stuck with it because uh, once you see the solution, unfortunately, you cannot unsee it. So I wish I'd stuck with it, and that's quite rare for me. Usually if I see an interesting problem, I'll keep trying until I get to the solution myself. Um, and I wish I'd stuck with this one. So to encourage you to give this one a go without trigonometry, I'm going to give a, a series of clues to maybe motivate you a little bit. So just before I give the clues, if you want to give this a go, pause the video now. Okay, here are the clues then. The first clue is, firstly, find all of the angles inside the diagram and then you need to draw in some extra straight lines okay that's the first clue uh, not much of a clue but maybe it helps the second clue is a bit bigger you need to draw in three extra lines okay that's the second clue three extra lines and the third and final clue is two of those extra lines that you draw in need to be equal in length to one or more of the existing lines in this picture. Okay, there are the three clues. Again, I encourage you to give this one a go. As I said, once you see the solution, you cannot unsee it. And with problems like this, if you can crack it yourself, it is really, really satisfying. As I said, I wish I had stuck with this one because I think the final solution is quite nice. Okay, so let's get into the solution then. No more blabbing. We need to show that AB equals CD. So as I said, the first step is to figure out all of the rest of the angles in this picture. Um, because this is 20, looking at this large triangle ACD, this is 20, this is 80, that means this remaining angle needs to be 80 degrees because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And I want this angle in here, CDB, if this is 10 degrees, the entire angle is 80, this remaining angle is going to be 70 degrees. Okay, 70 plus 10 is 80. And also this angle over here, these three angles need to add up to 180 degrees. 20 plus 10 is 30, so this one's going to be 150 degrees. Okay, now for the lines. This is the main part of this uh, proof. The first two lines are going to be equal in length to AD, so I'm going to create an equilateral triangle. Okay, like this. So these two lines are equal to AD. A fact about equilateral triangles is that all of that angles are equal to 60 degrees. So this angle up here will be 60 degrees. This uh, entire angle in here will be 60. So this remaining part will be 40 degrees. And this entire angle here will be 60 degrees. Um, so this part in here will be 10, sorry, 60 take 10 will be 50 degrees. Okay, and remember that 70 is that entire angle there. So it's going to get a little bit confusing with all of the numbers around, but hopefully it's clear what I've done there. Then the other line we need to draw is from this corner to C. Okay, and now we have two other angles that we need to go ahead and find. Another thing that I didn't point out about triangle ACD is that it is an isosceles triangle, right? Because these base angles are the same. This entire angle, CDA, was 80 degrees. This angle is 80 degrees. And if the base angles of a triangle are equal, then the triangle is isosceles. So that's the first thing I'm going to note. So uh, as angle ACD equals angle CDA, triangle ACD is isosceles. Okay, that means these two lines are the same. So then what do you notice about this triangle? And I might label this point so I can describe this. So what do you notice about triangle CAE? 
Well, these two lengths, AE and AC, are also equal, right? If AE was equal to AD and AD is equal to AC, then AE equals AC. So we can also say uh, triangle AEC is also isosceles. That means its base angles are equal. So if the one angle we have is 40 degrees, these two are the same and they need to add up to 140 degrees because angles in a triangle add up to 180. So the angles I'm talking about, just to be really clear, this entire angle in here and this one in here. Now clearly the lines I've drawn are not to scale, uh, but according to the rules I've followed, uh, these will be equal and they need to add up to 140. So 140 divided by two, that means both of these angles will be 70 degrees. This entire angle is 70. That means this remaining little angle in here, let's use a different color, is 70 take 60, that will be 10. Okay, and we're almost there. Uh, remember we said this entire angle here was 70, this little angle here was 50, that means this remaining part is 70 take 50, which is 20 degrees. And so now we have this triangle DEC, which is which has angles 20, 10, and 70 plus 80 is 150. This entire angle is 150. So angles 20, 10, and 150. And one of the sides is equal to AD. So let's have a look at this triangle ABD then. It has angles of 10, 20, and 150, just like this one and one of the sides is equal. And this is a rule of congruence. If you have two angles and a side uh, in that order to be the same, you can say those triangles are congruent. So actually, triangle ECD is congruent to ABD. So that's the next stage. Triangle EDC is congruent to triangle A. B, D. And this rule of congruence is AAS, angle, angle, side. Okay, and if they are congruent, then CD must equal AB because this is the side opposite that angle of 10 degrees. So therefore, we can say that AB equals side CD. And we're done. So that is how you're solving that without trigonometry. If you were to use trigonometry, you could use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Uh, there's lots of different options. Also, maybe there's a different way of solving this without trigonometry. Uh, if you find a different way of doing it, let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to see that. I hope you found that problem interesting and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.